So welcome and thank you for joining us here this evening at Jewel Collins Smith Museum of Fine Art. Uh, it's a pleasure to see so many people here. Um, and I, for those of you who arrived late and couldn't get a seat and are seated in the auditorium, uh, in the uh, cafe, thank you. And if more people come in, uh, I hope that streaming will run smoothly and they won't miss out. So I'm Dennis Harper. I'm curator of collections and exhibitions here at the museum. And tonight I have the distinct honor of introducing our guest speaker, uh, the artist Jiha Moon. Uh, we are featuring an exhibition of her recent work uh, titled Double Welcome, Most Everyone's Mad Here. And I know that you will find it most compelling, as I have. Ms. Moon was born in Tegu, South Korea. She earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts at Korea University and a Master of Fine Arts at Iwa Women's University, also in Korea, before moving to the United States to pursue a second master's degree at the University of Iowa. Ms. Moon has resided in the US since then. As you will see um, with the slides and also the exhibition that she is double masterful in many media, including painting, drawing, printmaking, and ceramic sculpture. She has achieved great success since uh, launching her career and has held exhibitions all across the United States and abroad in Europe and Asia. Her art has made its way into important museum collections, including the National Museum of Women in the Arts, Hershorn Museum and Sculpture Garden, the Asia Society, Mint Museum, High Museum, Asheville Museum, and Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. And we can add to that list the Jewel Collins Smith Museum, as we recently acquired a, uh, a print by Miss Moon. Her work is thought-provoking, humorous, adventurous, and visually stunning. In fact, the art critic John Yao complained in an article just a few years ago that Jiha Moon's work was prominently missing from the Whitney Biennial that year. I expect that uh, oversight will soon be uh, corrected sometime in the near future. But on behalf of this museum, I would like to acknowledge the financial support that we, that we have received to help bring Miss Moon here uh, and her art namely a grant from the Alabama State Council on the Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts in support of the exhibition. And co-sponsoring her lecture tonight uh, is the Alabama Humanities Foundation, a state program of the National Endowment for the Humanities. At the, um, at the risk of making a blatant political comment, uh, I'll simply ask you to remember that such programs as these are engendered and nurtured through the help of the NEA, NEH, and their state affiliates, and are today in possible danger of dissolution. On a brighter note, I want to thank and give credit to our two sister institutions that conceived this exhibition and set it out on a national tour. Jiha Moon Double Welcome, Most Everyone's Wel Mad Here, was organized by the Taubman Museum of Art in Roanoke, Virginia, in collaboration with the Halsey Institute of Contemporary Art in Charleston, South Carolina. Amy Moorfield at the Taubman and Mark Sloan at the Halsey co-curated the exhibition. We congratulate them on a fine job and are grateful for making it available to travel. One final note, a catalog is in production by the organizers and will be available at our museum shop uh, mid to late February. So I do hope you'll check back, view the exhibition and uh, pick up a catalog. Before I turn the podium over to Ms. Moon, I would like to acknowledge another special guest who is here in attendance, her gallerist in New York City, Jeffrey Lee of um, Ryan Lee Gallery, uh, who is also a lender to the exhibition. So we, we thank you, Jeff, and it's great to see you again. So now please join me in giving Jia Moon a very warm welcome to Auburn. Thank you. everybody. I'm very excited to be here and um, to see so many people in this uh, auditorium um, packed and people care so much about art and make, it makes my heart running really fast. And it's really, really honored to be here. And I've been treated really well. So far we arrived in this morning and uh, we went through sound check and everything. Everything seems really well. So I'm excited about talking about my work. 
And unfortunately, I brought so many slides. Like I brought about like 130 slides. And I should probably less talking and more showing. And uh, always turned out to be a better way that, that way. Um, so the show is organized by Harzi Institute and Tatma Museum. And they actually asked me to be in the show. And I was supposed to have two separate museum show. And then I realized I have to separate my ma major work to, for two institutions. And those two uh, museum director uh, talked with each other and then decided to combine so I can showcase my um, a very uh, a concrete body of work in one exhibition and rather have, them tr have it travel. So I'm really honored for that. So um, my work in this exhibi exhibition about like uh, over 60. And I start out as a painter. Uh, I have about 20 paintings and uh, 20 uh, wall hanging pieces based on Korean traditional accessory called norige, and another 20 pieces for installation format, a low table installation format for ceramic works. So it, it is indeed so much work for me, and I, I'm really humble to say it is, if it is okay to say it, it's my mid-career traveling exhibition has a, amazing body of work and I'm really excited to departure from it and to make brand new work from it. Um, so the idea of this show, I've looked at it many work and then sometimes I borrow title from one of my paintings or one of the work that I uh, give a lot of thought to title it and actually came from this painting. Uh, this painting calls uh, Everyone's Mad Here. And the quote from Alice in Wonderland, uh, Louis, um, uh, the, uh, the original uh, novel, but it's actually a quote from Disney animation based on that novel. Uh, so it's a quote, it's slightly different. And one of the characters in Alice in Wonderland is Cheshire Cat, and it's always um, amazing for me to think about. And I know uh, some people have religion, some people don't, some people have a bigger idea, and uh, whatever you call it, bigger uh, trust or belief system or bigger force, we all have it. Even though you're not religious, you have something that you know you want to believe into. And I um, rather want that bigger force to think it's a little naughty and a little funny, rather than um, uh, too dramatic or too scary, uh, being too serious. Of course, when I make my work, I'm damn serious, but I want to have a lighter side. So I always kind of think about that bigger force, kind of similar to in my world, it's like Cheshire Cat. So whether it's guiding you or teasing you, complex character, and sometimes you can't really figure it out, but at the end of the day, it's all up to you what to think. So the, in the uh, animation, Alice got lost, and she's trying to find those people from the tea party. I think those, uh, she's trying to find a, a white rabbit. And uh, Cheshire Cat was like, you know, oh, you have to go this way and that way. And she was confused, and um, you know, I don't want to go among the mad people. Those are mad people. And uh, Cheshire Cat was saying that, well, you know, but you're mad, I'm mad, everybody's mad, so what's the matter? It actually kind of um, represents our current state of mind or current state of country or worldwide. I, I just told my friends, like, in general, we are not only, I'm, I'm Korean-American, so that kind of led me to think that more of American, not yet citizen, but I live in America, so that's what I hear a lot about. But Korea is going through a lot these days too. So, like, which country is worse? I don't know. It's equally pretty crazy. Uh, but it's. But also at the same time, uh, it gives me the strength in my studio. If I care too much about the concept or meaning behind, I just kind of get lost and just kind of hung up on the idea and then not having so much fun. And then I constantly worry about it. So like, what the heck, let's just go for it. This is important, but I'm also allowed to have fun. And if it's not fun, I shouldn't be doing it. I should do something more fun. Life is too short. So that quote seems to me really perfect. Uh, and then it represents 
like my entire show in a way, but not just pinpoint one thing, but in general. So you see my painting have a um, common idea with my ceramic work and my also that kind of share idea with my wall hanging pieces. So in a way they're echoing each other, influence each other. And in a way also allow me to think that at the end of the day, I'm an artist, I'm not just a painter. And uh, when we think about Andy Warhol, nobody calls him his printmaker, although his printmaking, his prints are most famous and then people recognize. He is an artist at the end of the day. And we're also like artists, like you know, philosopher, dancer, doctor, but at the end of the day, we are all human. So I just think that that idea kind of really fits well. Um, so that's the idea of uh, the entire show. This piece kind of like hold it all together really well. And um, of course, this kind of borrowed the form of landscape. So my work is very heavily camouflaged. Some of them are more than others so. Uh, but here you see dragons and like brush strokes, Rittensteins, like uh, uh, yellow hair, and like little figures here and there, uh, chaotic but also you'll kind of see the smile of a Cheshire cat in the background. So the, I punch the eye hole in the one eye and then the big smiley face. So some people see it right away, some people are not. Um, but I always have a trouble. I mean, I know having artists talk so many times, I know if I say that, people will le really like it. But at the same time, I try to be careful. Once I pinpoint, um, things like that, that's all people that all they see. Like there's a hole, there's a lips, and then like, you know, ha yeah, like blonde hair. Um, but I cannot help myself, I needed to point that out. Because also sometimes when I do that, people get to see it better. Uh, so just to let you know, my work has a lot of elements and layers and camouflage and uh, the idea of an iconography, um, jumping the genre like back and forth constantly. Oh, but there is always cue elements that connect you to get back to the work and look at the second time. Um, so this one is called Big Pennsylvania Dutch Korean Painting. Uh, one of the things about my work is I, I really try to be careful and uh, whimsical and specific about the title. And I think that when I'm not there, when Dawson's not there, curator's not there, you have a conversation with my work alone and the art, artist statement or wall text in the museum is so long. Um, that title that you can see in you know, one second and that kind of help you to enter, to get into my world, to understand. So as you see, I'm really interested in combining and at the same time looking at the work technically, kind of like um, borrowing from so other countries like heritage uh, elements and kind of mix them together in my work. So and there are people come and make stuff and it's really old school and I've actually heard about and study research about them and um, they are very religious people. They don't, they are kind of move away from technology and things like that. And after they turn 18, they have to make decision whether they're gonna belong to that society or leave. And I thought that was really fascinating. They're the most kind of religious kind. At the same time, they do all kinds of uh, weird stuff, uh, like making the medicine themselves and do, it kind of remind me of my mom in a way that she's, a, she's Catholic, but she, met fortune teller several times for things like that and it also like uh, Pennsylvania Dutch and also Pennsylvania Dutch is like supposed to be German but I think I think my interpretation they're American so you're looking at American people and think that they're exotic but it's the American part of American culture so I thought that was really suiting for my work so here it says good means good you know g-o-o-d but also I put the all the double, so it looks like God. And good also means a witch ceremony in Korean words. So there's a lot of interesting, like, you know, thing going on between back and forth between two or more um, cultures. And at the same time, technique wise, um, I try to combine what's painted element versus what's collaged. So there are um, 
really uh, blend in, in a way. And I try to uh, look at the uh, traditional way of make marks and how people recognize things as very classic. At the same time, something really cheesy, like these are smiley faces stickers from that I got at like like craft store that like a second grade elementary school kid can do. So in a way that I'm trying to combine something high art, something low art, put them together on one page. And the shape you're probably curious, this shape came from uh, Asian fan painting, so they usually it's like overlapping each other, so they're interacting in a way. So when I'm making a fan painting, I also think about what's individual versus universal, in a way. So the social media is really interesting, and cell phones interesting because they're supposed to connect people, but at the same time they're really separating people, and they're full of conflict. And I'm really into those kind of thing. Well, you know, for example, for me, like when my mom called me, sometimes I don't want to pick up the phone. And <laughs> the cell phone is supposed to be, the phone, we call it phone because you're supposed to talk. But these days, like cell phone is almost like a secretary for everybody's life, you know? So you're texting more, you get online and buy stuff, you're doing other things rather than talking. So it's kind of wrong. But at the same time, if I didn't have Facebook chat, like I wouldn't talk to my mom that often for free. And so like, you know, the computer monitor, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the one monitor talking with my mom. At the same time, I'm also looking at CNN, like what's going on. So it's really personal, but also universal at the same time. It's really good and it's really bad. So I just thought that it's really interesting. So I uh, combined those things in my fan painting. So these are all at the gallery. You can see them in person. Uh, so this one actually called the, uh, I'm not really good with French, but I sometimes borrow the words for French word or like uh, Hispanic, like Spanish and stuff like that too. Cause I think it's kind of suiting to, for my work. It's called the pedigree. Um, so like the notion of, uh, Asian is an exotic quality. Like people have their expectation of what's really exotic. And I think when we get super excited before we go to foreign countries, we are packing our stuff and we get so excited about it. I think that's the most exciting time rather than actually being there. And when actually you are being there, they, sometimes you get disappointed, sometimes you get confused and because things are quite different than how you imagine. Um, so I think um, my work also deals uh, with uh, miscommunication, misunderstanding things. Um, and as a person living in the country, the most common question I get is where you're from. And I used to be, I should be just simple, but as an artist, I always think about what should I say? Because I have, lived in so many different places, went through so much stuff. I, I don't think it's right for me just to say I'm from South Korea, because I definitely have a different experience than people who are directly from South Korea just yesterday. Because part of me is from Iowa, part of me from Washington DC, part of, big part of me is from being in Atlanta, Georgia, more than 10 years. So it's very, very different, uh, but then people's expectation of me, it's like, you look foreigner, so I have my expectation, you should say either Chinese or Japanese or Korean. So, I, so a lot of those misunderstandings become part of my a very uh, important context. Uh, so here, I have this crane and people think that, oh, crane is very Asian kind, Asian animal. And I was like, let's Google, image Google, what comes up first. So that crane, came from Asian crane in Google image searching, the first image I could get. Um, and then I juxtaposed with other elements of ben bandana, like pattern, I think it's also kind of served a good purpose because like bandana, in my, uh, back in my hometown, my mother uh, go uh, like, uh, at, she has a meeting with the people go to church uh, together or go like, you know, outdoor doing activity. Or oh, they wear this bandana just to recognize. But here also gay people wear it on the backside. And also they put on their dog sometimes. And also this cowboy thing. So like there's a, so many different ways to interpret that pattern as, you know, how we know. But it's, um, 
you know, the uh, bandana pattern actually came from the Muslim culture. Um, you, so it's really interesting how we adopt one thing and then it has its own life to develop and then branch out. So here's a lot of images like, you know, I kind of consider one, you know, it's like one computer monitor and then it's like getting all over the place, but in a way they're all interact with each other. And that's the detail. So you can see the G from Google logo. And then that's like the embroidery, I think that I got in Korean outdoor market. They're probably Chinese made. <laughs> and then this one called uh, Beautiful Country, uh, it says Guk. Um, you know, Guk is a derogatory term to call Asian people. Uh, mostly focus on Korean, I think, uh, from Vietnamese war. But I thought that was interesting because it doesn't really mean anything. Nobody's gonna get offended because Guk means country, Guk means people. And Guk also means big pottage soup that everyone can share. Uh, <laughs> so it's the same as Yankee, I guess, like, because people, when Korean people in Korea say Yankee, you know that's a derogatory term for calling Western people, like especially American during Korean War, but it's Yankee, we, it's like a baseball team here, and it's just, um, it depends like where you use that. So Guk is, uh, I, also means uh, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum also looks like fire, fireworks, like almost like um, 4th of July for me, to remind me of that. And then fortune cookie is like also one of my popular elements because it represents misunderstanding, sorry. Uh, Oops, uh, you know, fortune cookie saying comes from a Chinese restaurant in America and no one knows in China. <laughs> that thinks like it's an Asian thing. And I thought that was really interesting. And then here, like, I'm doing that again. I'm not supposed to, like putting things in, in a format. <laughs> so it's like yellow also is also color for me. It's like has a duality, like Asian people like yellow, but at the same time, Korean people call the blonde hair, exotic blonde hair as, you know, foreign hairstyle. We call it yellow, literally in Korea, we say norang mori, which means blonde, which means yellow hair. So it depends how you're looking at things. But here it's like kind of like McDonald's I was thinking about. <laughs> So I collaborate with my grandma, and I wanted to make sort of painting has a, a border look like um, uh, baby blankets, Korean blankets. And she definitely loves sewing things together, put things together, make things to decorate house. But she's never professional, but she really enjoys it. And I really love that quality. Um, I look at minorities' work, I look at women's work. And people and society um, sort of uh, make a definition of like law art or folk art that I look at and I combine those things in my work and put it in the museum. And I almost feel like revenging. <laughs> and uh, here, my grandma uh, made me these uh, patches with the Korean fabric and inside is a uh, Korean mulberry paper. Um, so mo most of my work, I forgot to mention, is on Hanji paper, which is a uh, Korean mobile, handmade mobile paper. And then the medium that I use is ink and acrylic, which is um, American Western invention of substitute of oil paint. So the one support ground is like almost over 5,000 years old paper making with 100 year old, only 100 year old new boyfriend. They like happily met in my work. I, I like to kind of knowledge it that way. <laughs> Um, so this says detour, and I was thinking about making this work based on Korean uh, letter design folk art, and usually the, my reference uh, gives me an idea, but I don't really reference it directly, and I always twist and change, and sometimes change too much and no one recognizes it. Uh, but the idea is like you have a letter, mostly it's from Confucianism, Chinese Confucianism, Confu Confucianism uh, come to Korea and Japan as well. So it's kind of lecturish. Like, you know, you need to love your parents, you need to take care of them, you need to do this and do that. Uh, but at the same time, it has a really good message and a beautiful, beautifully designed. So it's like 
kind of uh, folk art, and sometimes uh, most of the folk art that no one knows who made made them, but that style become very popular. So uh, in Korea, Joseon period, people made those to decorate their houses and use a lot of bright colors. And the letters are heavily decorated and camouflaged. You can't really read it. And I really like the idea, so I um, borrowed that concept and then put it here. So it says detour. And I, I don't know, at the time I really liked the word detour, because like you just want to know everything so directly. Sometimes you have to go around to understand, especially for painting. I always call painting a bad boyfriend because they're not doing anything, just on the wall. <laughs> and kind of stuck up. Uh, it's like for contemporary art, there are so many, much, so much more entertainment, like performance, video art. Now people wear things like things coming in your face and look, paint, what, what is painting doing? I don't know. It's just sitting there or do nothing. And, being very cocky about it. Um, <laughs> but as an artist, how do I make that? How do I entertain the viewer? I mean, I think it's kind of important for, for me. Like, I want to invite people to come. Something really strange about work, that in, like make invitation for them to come and look at my work again, and they discover something more. So here is another uh, based on letter design painting. So here, say, bless your heart. And I really love that expression. I want to make that painting again. Bless your heart. It's so uh, snarky. It's so, <laughs> it's so, such a south, like southern expression. And, but I've heard it both way, snarky way, also very sincere way. Like at the end of the day, I guess so, like, uh, tired of like, my son's bad behavior, I complained to my mother-in-law. She's like, oh, bless your heart, sweet. And I know she meant it. She really blessed my heart. <laughs> but at some other time, I heard people saying that like that expression. So here, like you see, I kind of decorated. Like it looks like a dragon and cute. Here are also these elements from uh, Mexican folk art. And sometimes I find the similarity between Mexican folk art and Korean folk art. We celebrate with colors a lot. So one of these days, my dream is to visit Mexico City. But hopefully, hopefully things will get better so I can go visit. <laughs> but I still have Korean passport, so it should be OK. <laughs> but here, people think that this is, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't be too political about it. But I can't help myself. <laughs> here, it's supposed to, people are supposed to think it's a tiger, because I'm a Korean artist, but it's a jaguar. Um, so this is another one, and then I was like, I made a blank, several blanket I wanted to explore. I think this piece, from this piece, I was thinking about Norige. Like, you know, I wanted like, the painting to be more object, more weird than strange, so it kind of makes a connection. And that's a detail. And, and another large blanket piece, it's called the double, double. It's all in the show, so you can see. And it's a detail. So you can see the sewing marks went through the paper, and then the, you know, angry bird, but it looks like a peach shape. So it's not, never, it never the iconography never stays in one thing. It's always changing and shifting. And um, this one called El Sueno del Viajero, if I say it right, so it's a traveler's dream. And peach with the Mexican masks. And then you can sort of see the mask becoming, oh, my fan painting as a unit within painting becoming more like a mask kind. And then this one, I collaborated with one of the university, University of Minnesota, I think. And then we only had a short amount of budget with a short amount of time. So I could do only one screen print with one color. So I did with black, like kind of autobiographical in a way. As me, as a family member, like I'm a artist, but I'm also a mom. And uh, for the past few years, we went so much up and down. Sometimes you make work and you don't realize what that you have done. But after a while, you realize, oh my gosh, that was what it means. And it just kind of, for me, it's a family portrait. So it, this one called the Forever Couplehood one. Um, that's also kind of mimicking the day, nighttime. And I made a daytime one with more brighter color. And uh, you recognize that lady? 
instead of banana, she's holding peaches, peach butt. And this uh, Mandalian dog, they're, they're married and they're supposed to live together forever. So one died, the other one doesn't get married and just stay, you know, they just live by themselves alone. Uh, so this is a uh, blue color I did. So you see how color does very differently. Uh, here, you know, I was thinking about blue and white in ceramic. So you'll see more of just the line as a, just kind of like a map. So I did collaborate with a lamp press in Santa Fe. So we kind of, oh, you've been really interested in my fortune cookie saying, how about we make takeout boxes to the print. So we did screen print, uh, no, this is lithography, not screen print, sorry. Uh, so I made a map and then draw, so it makes all make sense in each side. So I like this side the best to go up, but any side can be up or down. And when I fold it 3D, it become like that. So some of the parts kind of hidden. And this is only from one direction, but it says, um, you know, bless, bless this house. The idea of folk art, like here in America and Korea, the family is the most important elements and I kind of have that quality in me. So that uh, concept comes out again a lot in my work. So I used paper and I uh, made a lot of like fan paintings. I wanted to take it to the next level and be more crazy because everybody's mad here. Um, I made a large uh, peach shape masks and instead of like putting so many eyes, because I like to do that, and I wanted to kind of provide a little moment when people look at the work. You know, the artwork is object, you're looking at it, right? But then suddenly you find eyes, and then you feel like the art, artwork is looking back at you, and you get like, I really like that moment in a way, like the artwork is teasing you, like look at, look at it well. So I was doing, putting lots of eye things and you'll see millions of them here and there, but then what's in direct way to suggest that? So I start putting a hole, suggesting people think of mask and going behind it. So it's another way to depict the eyes. And then this one says L-O-V-E with a tie-dye shirt, tie-dye thing. Um, tie-dye, I love tie-dye. And I put, my, we made a tie-dye shirt and put it on my son. And my son, my husband, he loves it now, but he used to freak out, don't put that on him. It's a hippie thing. I was like, what about it? So I Google and research and like 60s hippie culture, like anti-war and drug and all that. I loved it more. So I was like, <laughs> So I'm going to use that for my work. And that really resembled to my, uh, the, one of the fabric patterns that I use, the rainbow stripes. So if you remove all the stripes, the color is like pretty similar to tie-dye. So that's Korean letters, but acting like alphabet. So you almost feel like you can read Korean. So uh, entering the ceramic work. So you see in the beginning, they are very like angry bird kind. And so my work formats like really, um, when you look at first, it looks really kind of old and traditional, but it's amazing uh, when I have a show, kids group come in and look at the show, that's the first thing they find is angry bird. <laughs> and mommy, look over here, there's something that I know. And then it kind of connects the viewer to the work and then it kind of goes over different generation and I really enjoy that. And I think that almost like think that this character is connector for the generation. And you see the, you know, fortune cookie is coming out more actively now. And ceramic is like another way to explore for me to do like painting and drawing on the surfaces and differently. This one looks like broken, but I made it look like broken. And I've been going to ceramic community studio. It's been really fun because there's a functional ceramicist who like to make pots like perfect way. And they call them functional ceramic or decorative ceramic. And I never want to be a decorative ceramist. <laughs> you know, I, for me it's artwork, but I kind of, it opened up my, up my eyes. Uh, there's a community that trying to dis make a distinction that way. 
So I do hand building and throwing. I've been doing since 2000, late 2012, 13. So I can throw like all that stuff myself now. Uh, it's been really fun and experimental. And also because I always have a feeling of this is not my main genre medium. So I don't be too critical. It gives me a certain freedom to do a lot of crazy things. So I really love doing ceramic work. And this fortune cookie is like, uh, actually like three, four times bigger than actual fortune cookies that you get at the restaurant. But actually it's a quite bigger size, like four or five inches. So it gives me a space to draw. So I use almost like a ske little sketches. So this one is like a fortune cookie, but it's a, like a Japanese uh, mask called No. Like it's a represent beautiful young woman. So on the face. And then um, there's a, it is called you and I, so I was thinking about mother and son, the fortune cookie. And the group picture. So I've been, I have some reference picture that will help you to understand Norige work. So this uh, lady is K-pop. Now they uh, dismiss, but it's called 21. So look at her hair color. The Asian people wearing like uh, blonde hair, it's not really uncommon these days anymore. It's really popular. But I know it's not gonna look good on me, so I'm not gonna try. <laughs> so Big Bang, there are like huge K-pop stars. And look at their hairstyle. For me, like they're imitating other cultures, fashion and trend, they have a certain type of love. So for me, I'm not really kinda like, oh, you're not Korean, you shouldn't be doing it. I would never, like if someone want to wear hanbok, and I would be like, oh my gosh, it looks awesome. And so I'm more encouraging, inviting, so it, in a way that we almost celebrate every kind of culture. Uh, so pony bees on little kids. You know who that is, dreadlock. From Jamaica, I heard for the first time, but nowadays everybody wears it, and not everybody, a lot of people who are into it. And this style called fishtail with the braiding and the blue hair and Japanese cosplay, wanna be anime character. Marie Antoinette, blue hair in old school. <laughs> so I wanted to make object, cause like, you know, painting as a bad boyfriend, object is like love. Everybody, ob object is almost like that uncle that I love in the family. Cause everybody has object in their house and everybody travels and they always come with a souvenir and they love it. And how can artwork act like object, like household object, you know, then they'll be really like taken good care of because people love it, people love to collect. So I wanted to make object, like art object. So this is traditional uh, object called the norige. It's like almost like accessory. They wear under the jacket, the current traditional dress. Really fancy, you can see like the middle parts like, you know, gold and like jade and you know. But these are silk, so silk hand knotted silk part on the top here, that's chrysanthemum knot and the body part and silk tassel. I wanted to make it, so this is one of the Korean restaurants I go to in uh, Atlanta and they have it as a like, decoration. Um, they're about like 10 inches, like seven to 10 inches or a little smaller. So I wanted to make something like that with extension hair because the extension hair has all kinds of different style, and also the style comes, also reference a lot of different generation and you know, much more than me using color in a painting is, uh, compared to that is very ine ineffective way. <laughs> but it, it does, people really just kind of like accept it. And I, I really thought that was interesting. So we, I braided, braided really long, and then on the top, me and my assistant like learn how to do all this, looking at Korean books, YouTube tutorial, all kinds of thing. And mostly my uh, uh, assistant's like smarter than me so she could figure it out while I'm making ceramic like part for the middle. I just couldn't really focus much. <laughs> so she figured out ginger knot, chrysanthemum knot, um, so many like ring knots and other things. Sometimes I can't really make like complicated knot and I want to try, I kind of cheat and I make it and attach, but that's okay because 
cheating, we call it on the other words, cre being creative. So, <laughs> so this one called Mary, like I was thinking about Marie Antoinette. So that's like two ginger nut put together. So on the top, it's ba basically very like based on traditional manner. And then here in the middle, I can still explore ceramic painting, drawing, and that look like peach shape, peach bud, or masks. And bottom, I explore with the dreadlocks and different hairstyle. So mostly I use extension hair because it's cheaper and it's easier to control. But I do have some pieces inspire. Uh, people donate hair, started donating hair for me. So I was like kind of using that as well. And then that's detail. That's all in the exhibition you'll see later on. This one called the Hello Katie, but inspired by Hello Kitty. <laughs> so if you know someone, Katie, might have that kind of hair color. That one's called uh, Hosun. That's Betty. Uh, Owl Lady. This one called uh, Lar. I, I think I was thinking about Wizard of Oz, the lion character. And I think the, the character is the, the real actor's last name. I titled it. So here you see like uh, blue and white, Blue Willow, the story of Blue Willow um, designed by British people and the British stuff and people collect here for exotic Asianness. Um, I use that pattern a lot in my work. It's called the moon face and you see a uh, cupid face, kind of spooky. Oh combined with others, so that's the part that I cheated. <laughs> and this one called Rachel, and the, a friend of mine, uh, she donated hair, so I get to use uh, real human hair. And she told me she's, her zodiac is like pig, so I was thinking about Miss Piggy. <laughs> but then the patterns are blue willow patterns. Sarah. And this one I was kind of proud because you see the detail of dreadlock. I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so here are these beads. I made it, and that's our pony beads that people usually use. This one called Masa. You see the chopstick. My Japanese friend who is always smiling and sweet. This one called uh, Horang. Baba. And the group shot, you, you'll see it make almost mo make more sense because they look like a group, group of people that you don't know. <laughs> or you perhaps met at the grocery store. <laughs> so, and then I expanded to the mask. I kind of got hung up with the, all the knots, it's too difficult. I wanted to free myself and make a more, the bigger face where I can explore with. So, these are not in the show, but I wanted to show what, what's up with me these days in my studio. Happy. And you see um, that I used the t-shirt um, and then shred it and then use it again. Lucky Hog, the darker clay I used. And then, you know, the fortune cookie, once that it moved to different colors, it kind of looks like pig feed. All right. This one called Anang. I use a, a, a white earthenware, but that face is actually based on uh, African mask called Anang. And it has a, like fortune cookie on the top. And then it looked kind of too serious or a little spooky, so I put plastic beret. <laughs> and then I just couldn't stand it for a while. And then I looked at it over and over again, and it's like, okay, I can bear that image. So I kind of let it finish. Maya. And then I did workshop with kids, so kind of explore with the idea of masks. That I wanted to show you. And I love like kids' artwork, because there's some crude quality that remind me of we are all human beings to begin with, it's with mo no skill and so like down to earth um, in front of my work. I think that was Karamazu. So that's Moka GA, the installation picture. and Tapma Museum in Roanoke, Virginia. So some studio shots, I wanted to show you the practice. So how it goes. And then draw with the underglaze in detail. P 
peach pot, fortune cookies, and then that's how it turned out. So this one called immo um, immortal dessert. And it's funny because I put like emoji on the pot. I think it's a people's contemporary portrait in a way. Like people still care about people's emotion. So you like write something or text somebody and then put emoticon at the end. Sometimes you don't want that the other person to get mad and you put emoticon. And sometimes you're being snarky about it and put emoticon. So emotion is very important. And we were trying to do that with like teeny little computer. And I, I think it's like a, one way to show our portrait in contemporary world. But at the same time, when I do that to the pod, it also shows like, hey, this is not functional. <laughs> so people ask me, why did you make super well and then cut it like that? And they freak out at the like, community studio. So I'm like, so, so make sure that this is, no, no one use it for functional. <laughs> 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 So that's a Korean temple painting. Um, that's my son's, um, you know how the color is so bright? But it, it protects architecture, like you know, a bird cannot build a house. Uh, also protects the wood, I heard, but also it's beautiful to look at. And then see the color of the you know, back screen and the, all the food, it's really like, so I'm not only looking at RC history, things like that, but looking at things in general in real life. That's a, uh, me a Mexican um, quilt, uh, not quilt, like the embroidery. And that's part of my work. And the baby monks, uh, looks like Philip Gostin's head. And that, that's my knees. Ugly face joke in the south. So these are, some of them are, are uh, these are really new and no one has seen it. These, from here, this guy's pretty new. No one has seen this one was in the group show, but it's, so I'm making like the ceramic dolls with the hair now, it's come on the doll, real ceramic. <laughs> That's my friend. I think like every, every father does that to their kids, so amazing. <laughs> so I got the inspiration for that. <laughs> That's my friend. So the hair, like, you know, all the norige parts are coming on the top of the ceramic now. And this one got cut off. So these guys work in progress still. So like I become more painterly and drawing quality on the surface of ceramic. Princess Leia. And that's, that, this piece is a, a, a National a Museum of Women in the, in the art. I was uh, titled Princess Leia. Uh, Leia. So I think that's my last slide. <laughs> you are giving me sick. You, okay. Yeah. I'll, any questions? Food, right? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's more of common, and you answer your own question. I, th I think it's really awesome. Um, but my work is for my painting is so many layers and so many ideas. And sometimes I feel like I'm more of a maximalist in a way. And my work gets so dense. How do I make my work a little bit lighter? I want my work to be a little bit lighter so people won't be too afraid to get to it. Uh, if I do 
all that stuff with really lecturish style painting, then people will just walk away. So humor has been really great elements, and I think the humor uh, bring people more closer and kind of become lighthearted, and they look at the work and enjoy colors and iconography, landscape, every mark making, then by the time they get home or go to different places or look at the work second time again, they think about the concept again. So I wanted to, my work to be serious, but borrow the humor and light side so that my concept kind of survive and support and make balance. In terms of art, you mean? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. You know, Korea is very conservative, but America is very conservative too, I think. And we are married here. We don't, I don't have to, I mean, I, my full name is Jihamun Wilson, although no one uses it. <laughs> but Koreans don't have to change their name. In a way, I feel like a, I don't know. So conservative people are everywhere, and um, I don't want to make generalization. Like you know, you met a few people super conservative in the south or in Korea. Not entire country is entirely conservative, and I made my way here. And I think I, I have to say I was lucky that uh, my both parents were they were conservative, but they're very open to. Um, support me and doing art. And in fact, I'm a second child, I'm a middle child. I do have a middle child syndrome because my brother gets all the attention being a first son who is really, really important person. Now I get that and I want him to be important forever because he, he has all the responsibility. So I respect that culture, you know? <laughs> so in, in a way, like I was kind of neglected then I, I got to do a lot of crazy things because no one was looking at me. And, <laughs> and then every time I'm drawing and do something without me even noticing that I was already here. I mean, like, you know, oh, you know, in Korean say like, oh, she has at least one talent. And then every time I do something, they pay attention to me. I think that little compliment really got me into art and I've been doing it, doing it, because people keep giving me compliments, support me. And because I could come to Seoul, which is a capital in Korea, I grew up in the uh, south. Actually, uh, Daegu and Atlanta's sister city. Uh, Daegu is the third largest city, but still compared to Seoul, it's pretty conservative. Uh, because I get to come to Seoul to study, and they have to give that chance to my sister, too, and she could come as well. And uh, it's su surprisingly, there's a lot of support and open-minded people as well. You just have to find a way to work. And I, I know what you mean, and I have went through a lot. And when I told them I want to come study in US, my parents like, well, you, we saved some money for your, uh, your wedding, but that's the money you're going to spend then. You're going to go to school again. Like, I was like, yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, and then, in fact, when I met my husband and got married, we, small, we had a really small wedding with no money. But uh, my parents were really supportive. And I don't know, I wasn't really good at anything else. So it was just really natural for me to <laughs> be an art dork. And it was allowed in a conservative city, conservative environment. Um, but I don't think it should be discouraged anyway, because like, you just have to find your way to do it, right? And everybody has a different way of working because everybody's mad. Everybody has their way. And my way, it's not necessarily going to work with some, someone else's way. Um, I guess I was lucky, but also, um, I don't know. It just, I also wanted to be a teacher, but it didn't, life is interesting. My passage didn't go that direction. It's just like more, pe more become an artist. And I really was nervous about it. Like I wanted to be an artist, but like, how am I going to make a living? My husband wanted to be an artist, and he kept saying it. And his parents were like, you're going to live in a cardboard boxes. 
And then he's so proud of himself now, like, I don't live in cardboard boxes, I, we live in a real home. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's, I guess it, it, we have to find a way to work it. And for me, art is so important, like something, it, we are so poor, we can't buy even bread, who can afford art, who will look at art? But it's all under support, like it, it supports us so much, it's our soul food, like you can't undermine art. So. I don't know, my two cents. Good luck. Well, thank you so much for asking me that question. Well, my work, I think, is very orig original, to be honest. Like, I combine a lot of things rev using as a reference, but that combination, I could only do it. I don't think anybody did it that I appropriate. The appropriate quality, I think, I think is a common domain. People own it together. So Disney invented, has a designer for Snow White, but if no one can use Disney, like that's pretty sad. Disney is also not just American, it's the entire world is enjoying it. Korean rainbow stripes, we call it sektong, it's from a, a lower culture, but it became really popular, entire country even went back to palace, you know, people using it, that pattern. Nobody own it, community are owning it. So if that community has meaning to it, and I borrow that meaning that when I use it in my work, the con contextualize it, replace it in a different pla like, uh, place and with a different environment, it creates a dialogue. And without that meaning, it's use useless. If no one recognizes Mickey Mouse as a Mickey Mouse, I, sh I don't want to use it. Because that, use it as a language. Um, also, uh, what was the pattern, uh, tie-dye. We know the hippie culture, it's a big movement in the 60s. It's American own it, community own it, generation own it, entire people know about it. If that didn't happen, why should I use tie-dye? I don't really think it's appropriate. If I go around and then use somebody's like unique mark making, that person, I mean, you could say influence, but for me, I'm using that community language and juxtapose against what I have, what I have to say. And my composition for pulling them together, make them survive, make them on the same page, that's the creative part. So that language is important. I want people to recognize as a Disney character. I want people to recognize that as a rainbow stripes and want people to recognize that as an angry bird. If it is an angry bird that people use it in five-year-old use it and no one knows what that is, I don't need to use it. So I don't think I'm appropriating at all. And if I, so far I've never had a question, anything like that. And nobody trying to make a large a peach mask putting a hole. I think that's my own signature, my style. And people who copies my work in the younger generation, like I'm relatively unknown artist. Like I'm not Jackson Pollock or anybody super famous. So if someone used that, exactly the way I combine things together without telling me, then that's appropriation. Someone come up with a like, peach mask, putting a hole, and with like a peach faces with the Angry Bird style, then I would, uh, but the appropriation is a really sensitive issue, and also it's really vague, and it's, an artist also should know what's going on, also be honest with themselves when they're looking at other people's work, what's inf influence, what's appropriating. If you're looking at my work and sending me email, I really love your work and I want to try out something like that. And always start out as imitating somebody. That's totally fine as long as I get acknowledged 
you know? And I think it's honor, actually, for me that a lot of students like telling me, like, I've been kind of trying to do your style. And, and of course, there's a certain, like, mark makings and, like, e exploring with watercolor spread out and draw around it. And I don't own that style. There's a lot of people doing that style as well. And also, it's interesting, if you don't have your buddies, you know, your fellow painters who are exploring similar style, you're doing something wrong. Like, you're, you're alone, no one look at your work. I mean, it's a conversation. It's important that someone is exploring that style means it's valid. It's important that that's why it's interesting and valid. That's why they're doing it together. Like, why Cubism is not only Picasso. There are so many people in Cubism. Re, uh, surrealism as well. Dali is one of them, but there are so many other, uh, you know, surrealist artists. So I think that appropriation, I don't think I'm appropriating at all. And I think those using those as a community own it. Like I think the people own that stuff and I use that as a language. I hope that answered okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh, thank you for asking me that question. Um, well, I've been painting for a long time, so I sometimes have a hard time break my own system or mannerism. Um, then whenever I ex explore doing something else, and I get really refreshed and have a, like a refreshed eyes and to lo uh, look at my work again and do. And also it really depends on what I'm trying to achieve. So. For my goal, like I'm trying to research and then trying to find the right medium. And, but most obviously, I really love paint and draw. And I do that on ceramic surfaces a lot. Um, and then I use glaze as like paint. Um, but right now, I'm really into like craft side. And um, I don't know, I'm always looking at things like what's happening. and if I have a room to learn something new and then invite to my work. So I'm constantly looking. Yeah, well, it's like overwhelming right now still. It took several years for me to kind of learn and get feel comfortable to go to ceramic studio to deal with a lot of people. And I'm trying to build my, ceramic, my own ceramic studio at home. Uh, at the same time, I'm painting and I have family to take care of. So it's like, back and forth doing so many di different things at the same time. Uh, but then for me, just because I have a lot of time doesn't mean that I make best work. And I learned that a long time ago when I had a baby. Um, so I'm really grateful that I have family, supportive family, and I have like studio, and I just um, have to make time to work. And I also teach, so there's all these things for me is like big inspiration, so it really helped me to understand what I'm doing. Well, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>